So I came across this company a couple of months ago and um, I just love the product and I hounded this gentleman since then to just try and make a partnership happen and he was, he was nice enough to make it happen and uh, so we're here today, we got the roof rack installed, we have the side ladder installed and uh, I just wanted to just have him talk a little bit about his company and what he's about and what they do here because they really do an amazing amazing job with the products and uh, I feel like if you're if if you're getting into van life and you're looking for for a cool company where quality is never overlooked this is this is the place so Pierre from Remora yeah is here with me and uh, I'm just gonna bug him with some questions and you guys pay attention thanks man yeah so what is what is the name? What does that come from? So Remorico, uh, well, Remora is a fish. It's actually a fish uh, that likes to this little this little guy here, orange guy on the shark. So what it likes to do is uh, hitchhike rides on a shark's uh, belly or, or fins. So we actually feel like the company is there to help you hitchhike your way up to adventures and, and, and destinations. So it's a little you know poetic way of uh, of being on the road trips with you very cool yeah very cool and um, how did how did this company come to be or how did this uh, idea come to fruition so I, I built my first van about I don't know six or seven years ago to uh, travel across Canada and travel to uh, across the states and uh, I was uh, very surprised at the lack of products uh, that was available on the Canadian, uh, actually North American market. So I decided to uh, to design some myself, being an industrial designer. So I, I started, uh, you know, sketching, fabricating prototypes. And uh, when I came back from my trip a year or two after, uh, I decided to launch a company, a company with that, with those products. And, and here, here we are today. So uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild and fun ride uh, but what led to Remorico is really the testing uh, of, of the actual van life you know I, I didn't start a company because I, I wanted to get on the bandwagon I, I lived I lived the van life for for uh, quite a while and then uh, decided to bring that expertise or that experience into the products that uh, that we designed here so why why would I buy a Remora rack versus uh, all the other competitors? Like what, what what is it about your product that is so different? There's a few things. Well, first of all, we are a design company. We're a design firm. So it's uh, important to know the difference that we, we don't do any conversions. We don't do any, any builds of, of actual vans. We really concentrate on the product design. So uh, we're a team of uh, designers and engineers and we, uh, really look at the needs um, and maybe it doesn't jump uh, straight away uh, when you see our products but the modular roof rack was designed for customers to you know have the product shipped to their doorstep and be able to assemble it themselves in a very easy and quickly fashion so uh, you don't need to pay four thousand or five thousand dollars to get your roof rack shipped <laughs> to you and you don't need a bachelor's degree uh, in order to assemble it to your car it's really like the IKEA method if, if you may um, uh, second of all um, the roof racks or the other products that we're going to develop develop we always uh, have this modular aspect on our product so we want it to be um, well, yes, accessible, but modular on different vehicles, um, different models, different years. So we don't want you to change products every year and we don't want you to have a low quality product. So it's really something that you're going to be able to keep for the long run. Maybe you have one part that you need to change if you ever switch car models. And so you, you go on and you, you keep using your product and, and building on it. So. Uh, and of course, we're always adding add-ons and accessories and always new stuff every year that is based on our, our roof racks. So um, yeah, it's like a, a very fun uh, base module that you can you know add on and, 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 and expand throughout the years. Yeah. Awesome. Tell me about the next steps and what's happening moving forward. 
Uh, we're looking for people to help us because we, <laughs> we have a worker shortage. So if you have any experience in uh, the design uh, field, industrial design, uh, maybe graphic design, uh, we're looking also for social media uh, management. Uh, we're really looking to expand our team because it's a small operation right now and the demand is really overwhelming. So I'm looking for designers, uh, technical people, uh, warehouse, <laughs> the works, man. All the help you yeah, can get. The shortage is pretty bad. So we're, we're, we're having a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, I'm looking to expand the team. A lot of new products coming out. We have some side steps, some grill guards that are going to be really different from what we're currently seeing. Uh, a new uh, roof rack that's coming out very shortly uh, that it's, is going to be once again modular, fully modular, but with a very different look. I think people are going to uh, really, really enjoy that. And uh, I think they really have to stay tuned and uh, look, at, <laughs> look at your content to know what's coming out, right? Honestly, um, he showed me the new roof rack and I told him not to show me it because if I see it, then I might want to change it right away. And <laughs> I love the way it looks. It's fantastic. I'm not gonna say any more. You guys will just have to tune in uh, to more content. I think we're gonna be doing a lot of this. Uh, maybe not necessarily across the table from each other, but um, a lot of cool stuff will be happening over here. So I think that's all we got. Um, thank you so much, man, for um, taking this on and pleasure. doing this. Yeah. I know there was, uh, we were we were treading lightly, both of us, on how we're gonna make this happen. But I'm I'm glad we're moving forward. I think it's gonna be really cool. Um, and I can't wait to just fucking use that thing. <laughs> You're gonna have a blast. Yeah, man. man. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Um, I gotta drive across Canada now, so I'll catch you guys in the next town. Keep rolling. In case you're wondering how my day is going, amazing, except for the fact that I just noticed this in my front tire. Let me see if I can brighten that up for y'all. You see that? See that gash there? It is literally the size of my, half my thumb. So, so, we're gonna do our first surgery, and luckily, we got a full size spare that was underneath here. And luckily, I cut this thing out right before I left Halifax. Like, literally, the day before I left, I cut that out. So, I'm gonna do this. Hopefully, we have enough uh, air pressure in this tire to make it across the street there is a right there there's a gas station I can get some air if I don't have enough air um, had to take out my bike my tires had to take off the roof the bike rack and a box to access the nonsense that is back here so uh, I'm gonna set this up so I can film myself for memories later and uh, we'll go from there, so keep watching. Holy f The plan is to make it all the way to Calgary on this full-size pair. It doesn't have TPMS, which is like tire pressure monitoring, monitoring systems. Um, so I'm just gonna keep checking on it, make sure that I don't get a flat. I don't know how long this tire has had air in it. I don't know how long it's been there. Um, yeah, I'm just praying that we don't have any issues tonight. Uh, I am going to make it from, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go from here. I got about 200 kilometers to go before I park it for the night. And then I got another two or 300 kilometers to make it into Toronto. Um, I know in Toronto I can get them swapped, swap, swap out and, uh, I might do that. Uh, depending on how it holds. If by tomorrow when I get into Toronto, I've you know, forgotten about it and I don't see any issues with it, 
um, we might just continue on if there's vibrations or rumbles or whatever um, we will assess I guess this is part of the van life adventures Woo! anyways I'm gonna get driving catch you guys later I'm in Toronto with Dylan or Andrew as some of you guys know him <laughs> uh, we're going on a walk so come on an adventure walk with us Oh. Did you just grab my ass? <laughs> Yo, hold on, man. I am way too. For a second. Oh, are you? Well, I'm not. I'm okay. We both. Real quick before we leave, I wanted to just point out that this is actually the place because even Disney, I don't Um, I am in Thunder Bay, of all places, found a spot last night, um, by a boat launch, and there are one, two, three, three other campers here on the other side, I parked on this side, big mistake, all night people were coming and going, parking, having a smoke, having a toke, it was alright, I slept great. It was the first night that I slept in my bed because I was sleeping on the on the little bench here, and I fit on it because I can turn the I can turn the seat around and then I can fit on this bench. Now it's not even cut to size yet, so luckily for me, I slept all right. So I've been sleeping on there because the window and the other window. I opened them and I get a nice cross breeze and um, the reason why I opened them and I opened is because when we painted the van white, um, 
the paint that we used off gassed which like basically it had a really long cure time like 14 days now like not to like touch cure but just like off gas cure so um it was off gassing literally up until like maybe a day ago so last night was the first night where i could sleep excuse the mess back there no problem and it was amazing i must say so this morning we are gonna go get ourselves a juicy coffee from church because there is a cafe that's in a church so we're gonna go check that out um i just woke up like 10 minutes ago i was supposed to wake up at five it's now eight uh, this road trip is exhausting across Canada. Uh, everything is so clear. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. See you guys in a bit. morning afternoon more like the afternoon it seems like um just had a beautiful lunch in Kenora uh it looks like we're making really good progress I think I'm gonna make it all the way to Brandon maybe past Brandon Manitoba today but the last time I was here this whole dock was just like iced out so let's see what this looks like in the summertime over there I don't know if you can see it let's see here like how big is this lake that airplanes can land on it that's moderately impressive I've never lived near water or on the water, you know, like boats and like lakefront and like just I'm kind of afraid of the water. Like that's just never been normal to me. Um, I hate deep water because you don't know what's lurking underneath, you know, but you know, just like looking around at all these people just having a fucking time with their lives. I understand. I understand why it's so uh engaging you know if you will but uh we're gonna go for a little stroll and then we're gonna get driving so let's see what is happening in kenora
so <clears throat> the last time we were here it was winter and that building didn't look as good so i'm gonna go grab like a nice coffee or something and some treats because i remember there's a bakery in here and um i'm gonna go for a little stroll we are in winnipeg at the forks market which is that old train um train station slash depot whatever turn into a market so i'll show you around a little bit more than the last time we were here four months ago so check this out Okay, we aborted on the treats because there wasn't anything too exciting. So, coffee from Fools and Horses or Horses and Fools, either way, I think this was really good last time. So, uh, we are going to go check out that museum on that side and go for a little stroll. But first, I forgot something in the van. So go for a walk just a side note do you want to see what a week of living in here with absolutely no organization looks like yeah that drawer slides out because um forgot to add a striker plate to that one so i'll have to add that when i get to calgary which is fine i have some extra it's not a problem but it's been fucking bouncing in and out the entire trip and i can't really do anything about it because there is um there's nowhere to like strap a strap too. you know that makes sense I don't want to tape anything because I don't want to ruin the cabinets so it's just brain doesn't break So, they put a statue of Gandhi here, which was gifted to the Indian Council of Canada um, for the museum, because the Human Rights Museum, I guess. So, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Check this out.
morning, beautiful people. Oh boy, oh boy. It's been a week. This is this is this is a raw take. There's no planning. Um, I wanted to do this last night because officially last night was my first week in the van. Today is my first week in the van, I guess you could say. Um how has it been? You might be wondering. It's been rough. Mostly because of the whole off-gassing thing. Mostly because I don't have any power. So like can't charge shit. Everything's dead. Um mostly because all I've done is drive, and that's not really the ideal way to live this lifestyle and well with the whole like no power um i also don't have like, my propane tank in here because of all the crap i have to bring um so i don't i can't cook i don't have water um i mean i have water but i don't have my like water 100 liters of water so it's been rough for those reasons um has it been bad no um, and it, as a matter of fact, it hasn't, like, I don't know, it's like you're camping for a week in a van, so you kind of, like, don't have to set up a tent, but you kind of just, like, eat out, which is really expensive. This shouldn't, this shouldn't even be an issue, you know? Like, if, if I had all my stuff dialed in, um, this would be very, very easy, um, and enjoyable, and it has been enjoyable. I think my favorite part on this whole trip has been um, just finding places to sleep. I actually, I kind of, I find that to be a bit of an adventure. I was in Thunder Bay yesterday. Today I am in literally at the edge of Brandon uh, at the gas station at the SO. It's, uh, this is where I slept last night. Um, not here not not where i am parked right now i slept actually a little bit further away uh on some dirt road um kind of away from all the noise and all the nonsense but as i was saying i find i find some joy in trying to find a place to sleep i think it's uh it's exciting or something or like i don't know it's it's fun please got a coffee gross but it'll do yeah i don't know i just wanted to reflect a little bit on my trip and just share with y'all the honesty of it it also hasn't been anything that i've you know i don't know i slept in my jeep for a week without half of this stuff you know like i had to like my bed was not as comfortable as it is right now like i didn't have uh, a bench to sit and eat and stuff like yesterday i had had some quiznos just overlooking the sunset, you know? I think what's important to take away from this experience in the last week is I was listening to an audiobook yesterday and it was talking about how, you know, sometimes the things that we, we strive for, the goals, when we attain them, they're actually super underwhelming. And the reason why they're underwhelming is because of our, our expectation of what this is supposed to be like right or whatever that goal is um and then i went to say that we find happiness in what we do once we've once we've gone through the repetition of doing this new thing over and over so uh, applying that to this situation i thought well, not that i thought i had a feeling that it was going to be rough without having power and water and plumbing and all that stuff um and I thought, I think what I what I was uh, anticipating was maybe driving across Canada being a little bit more exciting. Um, but then again, I started thinking about that, right? And it's like, I'm just literally blasting across the country. I'm stopping to sleep. I'm doing 10 hour days. Um, I'm driving nonstop, right? So I can appreciate my views and I can enjoy the music and 
audiobooks and all that good stuff, and the tasty eats, and I have a thing for finding a bakery, a brewery, or a cafe anywhere I go. Um, I find that those those kind of three things make me really enjoy a place, you know? Like that bakery, that, that cafe in Thunder Bay was, I ended up having three croissants from there. That's how good, that's how good it was. I had two savory croissants and one hazelnut chocolate croissant. And I wish I bought more because they were just that good. I got Marco Polo's. With 20 pieces. 20. I got 40 treats. Um, yes, I have a sweet tooth. No, I don't care that sugar is bad for you. We're all going to die. So go live your life. I'm gonna enjoy this coffee. I think I'm done my rant. 